Alléluia. Et pour sopra gede ke chante gede le de pour sopra gade ke chante gede de. Ma sante gede le de pour sopra gede ke chante gede de le ke chante gede le de pour sopra gede de. A sante gede le de pour sopra gede ke chante gede le de pour sopra gede de de de. Ande gede le de pour sopra gede de ke chante gede le de pour sopra gede de. Mande gede le de pour ko sopra gede ke chante gede le de pour sopra de de de. In the gede le de bo 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 so pra gede ke shante gede le de bo so pra gede de. Bi e ke shante gede le de bo so pra de 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 ke shante gede le de bo so pra de de de. An de gede le de bo 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 so pra de 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 ke shante gede le de. Ye ba shante gede le de. Have your way father again today. Do what only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus. Le bo so pra gede de. Thank you Lord for another Sunday, another time to hear your word. Be exalted Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, be exalted. Have your way, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, Lord, in the lives of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, say le bo so pragede de. Ye ma sante gede le de gede ke shante gede de. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have for your people today. Thank you for all that you have for them in this year. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because it is our year of becoming greater and greater by you, the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we commit to this program into your hands. Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light unto our path. I pray, Lord, that your word will bring illumination to our journey in life. I pray, Lord, that your people will receive direction. They will not walk in darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that your will will be done in their lives. Those who need answers to their questions, let them receive let people receive direction. Let people receive encouragement. Let people receive empowerment. And let your name and your name alone be glorified. Have your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, do it again. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated on the throne. Open the eyes of people's understanding. Let their eyes of understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Father. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the glory be to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are watching from. I am Pastor Taiwo Iridele Ojibi, and this is Tender Hearts Link. It's an online program to minister to Christian singles and couples to answer the questions that may be in their hearts, to let them know the will of God concerning relationship and marriage, ministry, whatever God wants us to talk about. And I pray that you'll be greatly encouraged, you'll be greatly blessed, as always, in Jesus' name. In the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 22, an angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel and told him that he had come to give Daniel skill and understanding. And that is what this program is all about. That is what God is doing through this program. To give you, to give his people skill and understanding concerning life, concerning relationship and marriage. And I pray again that the Lord will do wonderful things in your life. You will have testimonies to share. Your joy will be full in Jesus' name. Um, one of the scriptures we stand on here in Tender Hearts Link is Psalms 138, verse 8. Psalms 138, verse 8. The Lord, um, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord does not forsake the works of his hands and he will not forsake me in Jesus' name. You are going to personalize it. Say it to yourself every day, regularly. The Lord will perfect all that concerns me. 
the Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord does not forsake the works of his hands, and he will not forsake me in Jesus' name. And uh, one of uh, God's works to us for this year 2024 is 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible says, David became greater and greater, for the Lord God of hosts was with him. And by God's mercies, this year will become greater and greater by the Father. For the Lord is with us. He will make us become greater and greater. I pray that prayer for you, that all will be well. You will become greater and greater. The Lord will multiply you. He will increase you in Jesus' name. Don't forget that this program holds every Sunday, same time. If there's going to be any change, it will be announced. If anyone contacts you asking you to make a donation to an orphanage or transfer money into an account so that you can be prayed for, so that you can receive your miracles or whatever, I want you to know that that has nothing to do with me. If you're in a relationship uh, as a single person, God wants your relationship to glorify him. Let the word of God lead you. Let the word of God guide you. Obey God. Um, be intimate with the Holy Spirit. And be sure that you are, you are being properly counseled by uh, a godly person so that you can be sure of the will of God and, and, uh, and, for, and obey. That's very important. God wants your relationship to glorify him. And for those who are married, the same thing applies. God wants your marriage to glorify him. Continue to love. Continue to pray. Continue to do what is right. Stay there. Uh, uh, get the word of God to lead you. Be sure of what the word of God says. Be sure that you are being properly counseled. However, if your life is in danger and you leave, make sure that you don't leave. So begin to mess around or make sure that you don't leave and you jump into another relationship. Continue to pray for your marriage wherever you are. And the Lord who sees in secret, he will reward you openly in Jesus' name. So um, today, I'm going to be talking about how to handle parental disapproval, where your parents uh, disapprove of your relationship. What should you do? What should you do? How should you handle it? I dealt with this matter in some of my novels. I dealt with the issue of parental disapproval in Love of the Pulpit. I mentioned it in, um, I'll take you there. I mentioned it in This Time Around. I mentioned it in um, You Found Me. I mentioned it in Tears on My Pillow. I, I'm, Writing about this is so that people will know what to do, so that they can be properly cancelled, so that they don't um, fall into Satan's trap, so that they don't um, uh, get into a wrong relationship and then they are struggling. And I pray that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And what God has for you today, as the word will be coming forth, I pray for an understanding heart, and especially for those who might need proper counseling. Concerning the issue of parental disapproval, I pray that you will understand. I pray that that answer that you need, the direction, the word that you need, will come to you and give you help in Jesus' name. So, um, I'm talking about parental disapproval. Where there's parental disapproval, it can be an indication of a mismatched or a bad relationship where there's parental disapproval and it's possible that if the parents are not even christians they might be christians they might not be christians but where there's parental disapproval the, the two people the man and the woman involved they have to pray the couple involved have to pray to know the mind of god and of course this program is to counsel to encourage to empower and give direction to christians especially People who are not Christians, they, I want to encourage you to give your life to Christ. And if you are not very sure of what to do, please contact me so that I can guide you. But you need to know that God loves you and Jesus died for everyone. He died for you. God loves you and he wants to give you the best in life. So feel free to contact me so that you can know what to do, the steps to take. Now, if you are, if you are a Christian and uh, 
but your parents disapprove. As I already said, that might be an indication of a mismatched relationship or a bad relationship. So don't disregard it. You need to pray, and I'm going to, and that's what I'm doing today to let you know what to do, how to handle it. Let's start and um, where their parents are disapproval. It might be that your parents are wrong. And it might be that you are wrong. Maybe that person is not the right person for you. So we are going to be considering all of that. Let's start by looking at the book of Judges, chapter 14. From verse 1, this is about um, Samson. The book of Judges, chapter 14, from verse 1. And I read, one day when Samson was in Timnah, one of the Philistine women caught his eye. So one of the Philistine women caught his eye. Samson was a child of purpose. He had a, a, a destiny to fulfill. Samson belongs to the Lord. So even if a strange woman caught his eye, he was supposed to take, he must have put some things in place in his life so that or learned how to handle such a thing. So that if it, if it should happen, he, he will not be caught on aware that he will know what to do. Do the right thing, and he will not fall into Satan's trap. Satan is always setting traps for people, and people need to be careful. And if Satan cannot get you through other ways, he will try to wait for you when, when it comes to the area of marriage so that you can miss it, and so that the destiny of that, person's, uh, of the destiny of that person is truncated. So that's what Satan did here. Samson had been doing right. And then all of a sudden, he began to have these issues with the Philistine women. He was supposed to look away. He was supposed to run. The Bible says, flee from all appearances of evil. He was not even supposed to bring himself to that point where he will see, he will look and one of the enemies will catch his eye. But that's what happened here. One of the Philistine women caught his eye. And when he returned home, he told his father and mother, a young Philistine woman in Timna caught my eye. So Samson did not run away. He did not flee. He looked. And he was interested. And he began to consider it. He actually began to take steps. He began to make moves. So he told his father and mother, a young Philistine woman in Timna caught my eye. I want to marry her. Get her for me. Just like that. But Samson knew that he was not supposed to marry one of the Philistines. Yes. That was what he wanted to do now. He told his parents, I want to marry her. Get her for me. And in verse 3, his father and mother objected. That's parental disapproval. They objected. Isn't there even one woman in our tribe or among all the Israelites that you could marry? So his parents knew how things should be. His parents knew if he was going to get to, to uh, marry someone, it should be from among his people, not from among the enemies. The, uh, the um, Philistines, they were not just ungodly. They were the enemies of the children of Israel. They were ungodly, and they were also the enemies of the children of Israel. So Samson, and that was why God even uh, brought Samson into the picture on the scene. Samson was supposed to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. But now Samson was fraternizing with them. Now Samson wanted to marry one of them. So his parents said, no, this is not right. They objected. They disapproved. No, you can't do that. That's not right. And they said, isn't there even one woman in our tribe or among all the, uh, all the Israelites that you could marry? They asked, why must you go to the pagan Philistines to find a wife? But Samson told them, get her for me. She looks good to me. Samson insisted, no, get her for me. She looks good to me. But when it comes to marriage, the look is not enough. I was sharing with some people this past week that 
love is not enough to make a good marriage, to make your marriage work. Love is not enough. The look is not enough. The appearance, whatever the person has, is not enough. It takes God to make a marriage work. But Samson was not ready to consider all of that. He was not ready to listen. He said, she looks good to me. Get her for me. So Samson must have, been, must have told himself, I am old enough. I am an adult. I'm a man. And I can make my decisions. Yes, Samson was old enough to make his decisions. However, number one, if you have God's call upon your life, you can't marry just anybody. And as a child of God, if you are a Christian, you may not be a pastor, you may not, be, you may not uh, have a title, but as a Christian, you have God's call upon your life. As a Christian, you have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. You are carrying God's call. And you are not supposed to marry just anybody. You are supposed to pray and slow down and get uh, people involved, people who know the mind of God, so that you can be praying together. And there's no time that you should stop praying. You must continue to pray. Even after marriage, you continue to pray. You continue to seek the face of God and continue to um, be properly counseled. Make sure that you have um, uh, godly people, godly leaders in your life, a godly spiritual parents. So yes, Samson was old enough. So Samson insisted. He told his parents, get up for me. Because he felt he was an adult, he could make his decisions. But in this case, his parents were, they were the people of God also. His parents knew the word of God. They knew what God wanted. They knew God's promise, God's word to them. When um, Samson was being conceived, they knew what God told them. So they were right in this case. And they told him, no, this should not be. But Samson insisted. Samson should have listened to his parents. Now, there are some things that you should keep in mind as a single man, a single woman. And especially those who might be having this uh, situation, the issue of uh, parental disapproval. There are some things that you will need to keep in mind. Number one, yes, definitely a time comes when a child becomes an adult and you can make your decisions. You need to know this. Where spiritual matters are concerned and where God is involved, you will always be God's son, God's daughter. Where spiritual matters are concerned, you will always need spiritual guidance. You will always need the counsel of a spiritual parent, someone who, a godly spiritual parent, someone who knows the mind of God. So, so that you can be sure of what you are doing and to be sure that you are making the right decision. So you are an adult, but you will still need to submit. You need to find, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to make you know who to submit to. And then you allow that person to, you allow God to use that person to guide you. However, be sure that that person is godly and knows the mind of God. Now, if you are a Christian, you also need to be sure that the person you want to marry is uh, a Christian as well. Be sure that the person is also a Christian. Uh, the Bible says in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, uh, the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked together with uh, a non-believer. That means God does not want a Christian to get involved with a non-Christian, an unbeliever. If you are a Christian, the person you want to marry must be a Christian. And then another thing you need to have at the back of your mind when it comes to choosing the right person to marry, God wants parents to be involved. God wants parents to be involved and to consider that your choice is right. God himself puts certain responsibilities on parents. And we are going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. God himself puts 
certain responsibilities on parents. So when parents are trying to get involved, they are, they are being biblical. They are doing what is right. They are doing what God wants them to do. They are playing their role in your life. However, you, you now need to sit down and, and consider in this matter, is, is what my parents, is what they are saying right or wrong? And then that will guide you. I will come to that. So God puts responsibilities on parents. God wants parents to be involved when it comes to the issue of uh, marriage, the, uh, when, they are, when the children are choosing whom to marry. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1. Um, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and he has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gigashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show them mercy. Nor shall you make marriages with them. Then look at the next line. The Bible says, you shall not give your daughter to their son. So God is putting the responsibility on parents now. You have to make sure, as a parent, you shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. So God is talking to the parents now, not the son or the daughter. God is talking to the parents. You are responsible. I'm going to hold you responsible. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Why? For they will turn your sons away from following me. So serve other gods. So God is involving Christian parents. Parents who know his mind so that they will be able to remind their children about the word of God and guide them so that they don't make a mistake. This is what the Bible says. This is what God wants. This is how it should be done and all of that. So that things can be right. The Bible, God said there, getting married to the wrong person or marrying the wrong, um, the wrong woman, they will take, they will, Turn your thoughts away from following me to so serve other gods so that the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy and all of that. So it is so that the children can, will be able to make the right decisions. So God is uh, placing those responsibilities on the parents. So when the parents um, are trying to get involved, the children need to realize that they are talking from a heart of love, from the place of love. And because they have a role to play. So when your parents are getting involved, don't um, dismiss what they are saying. You need to listen and consider. Because you are a Christian, you have to pray and then know what God is saying. Go to God in prayer, seek the face of God, and God will make you know what to do. But I'm going to say some things that will greatly help you. So where there's parental disapproval, there are some questions you will need to ask yourself to determine the will of God. Because marriage is a serious matter. So let me break it down. I'll start by talking about where your parents are not Christians. Your parents are not Christians and they disapprove of your relationship. They are not Christians. You are a Christian. You are a Christian, but your parents are not. And they are uh, giving an opinion. They disapprove of your relationship. These are some of the things you need to consider. Number one, what is the reason that they are opposed to your choice? What is the reason? Why are they saying no to your choice? Number two, you need to find out. Are their reasons selfish and wrong? Or do they actually see danger ahead of you in this relationship? Are their reasons selfish and wrong? Or 
are they actually sensing danger that hmm, they are seeing something that's not going to work concerning this relationship? Now, if their uh, reasoning is selfish and wrong, for example, because they are not Christians and they don't really know the mind of God, maybe for some reasons they don't want to release you yet to be married. And they are just giving you excuses. They don't want you to go yet. That means that their reason is selfish and wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. So what should you do as a Christian? Pray. Let the word of God guide you. What does the Bible say concerning marriage and all of that? What is God's will for you? Get godly counsel. And when I'm talking about godly counsel, I'm talking about getting godly counsel from your spiritual parents. If you attend the right church, a godly church, a church where Jesus is a Lord and where the Holy Spirit is in control, then you should go to your pastor, get your pastor involved. When I'm talking about godly counsel, I'm not talking about getting counsel from your colleagues at work, from your friends, from one, from one neighborhood uncle, from one neighborhood uh, auntie and all of that. I'm talking about getting God, godly counsel from your spiritual parents so that you can make the right decision because the issue of marriage is a serious matter. So if, they are, if their reason is selfish and wrong, they, for, for, probably they don't want you to get married yet. Let the word of God guide you. Get godly counsel. Pray so that you will know what God is saying. Um, and then make the right decision according to the word of the Lord. And then you will need to explain to your parents why you, why you have to um, take the step you want to take. Why you will need to disobey them and obey God. Why you will need to get married. You need to explain to them because sometimes some, some, they might not understand that or they might not realize that what they are saying or doing is wrong. So you need to explain to them. Don't get angry. Don't fight them. But pray so that you can be calm and then explain to them. This is what the word of God says. This is what God wants for me. I have a role. I have a, uh, a destiny to fulfill. This is the right person for me and all of that. Of course, your pastor must be involved. So discuss with your parents and make the right decision. If their reason is selfish and wrong, for example, maybe they want you to marry from a particular tribe. Again, the same thing applies. Search the word of God. What does the Bible say? If you are not very sure, get godly cancer from your spiritual parents godly spiritual parents when i'm talking about godly spiritual parents again let me also say that it's not about oh there's a prophet somewhere you make a prophet your uh, spiritual parents some people are like that oh because that person sees visions and all of that they made that person their spiritual parent you will run into trouble you will need to it, the, the, what, the safest way to get the right um, spiritual parent is by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to the right church so that you can submit. But it's also possible that, okay, for some reasons you are in this church, but God, God leads you to make someone in a, someone. Uh, your spiritual parent, someone in another, in another ministry, your spiritual parent. But you need to be sure that you are hearing God so that you don't run into trouble. So if um, their reason is selfish and wrong, the same thing applies. Let the word of God guide you. Explain things to them. This is what the Bible says. I don't have to marry from this particular tribe. What matters is that the person is a Christian and all of that. You explain things to them. Get godly counsel, involve your pastor, your spiritual parents, make the right decision and um, do what uh, God is leading you to do. If their reason, number three, if their reason is wrong, for example, 
your parents are opposed to your relationship. They don't want that relationship. They don't want you to marry that person because you are a Christian and that person is a Christian. They want you to marry someone who, is, who belongs to their own faith, their own religion. They are not Christians. But because you are a Christian and the person you want to marry is a Christian, they are saying no. They want you to come back and marry according to their own belief, to marry from their own faith. Again, the word, you have to go with the word of God. What does the Bible say? Where God says one thing, God says, if you are a Christian, you should marry a Christian. But your parents are saying, no, don't marry a Christian. Come and marry someone who belongs to our, our own faith, our religion. In that case, what does the Bible say? You have to go with the word of God. The, um, the apostles, Peter and, and uh, some of the apostles, there was a time they were imprisoned and they were being threatened. They were told to stop preaching Jesus, to stop preaching in the name of Jesus and all of that. And the apostles, they told those people, you can do whatever you want to do, but we will obey God rather than man. We will not obey you. We will obey God. We have certain uh, instructions from God. We are not going to obey you. And we are not careful to answer you in this matter. So where the word of God says one thing, God says one thing. God wants you to do a particular thing. And your parents want you to do something contrary. You have to go with the word of God. You have to go with the word of God. Of course, involve your pastor also. It doesn't hurt to involve your pastor to get godly counsel, just to be, just to have support for yourself. So involve your pastor, uh, your godly spiritual parents. However, again, don't be disrespectful to your parents. Don't be disrespectful, but explain things to them. Let them know that I'm a Christian. For example, when I wanted to get married, I was a Christian and I, was, I had chosen to marry a Christian. And then for the, for the ceremonies, the um, engagement ceremony, my parents were not, my mother was a Christian. She had given her life to Christ. I preached to my mother. She had become a Christian. My, mother, my father was not born again. My mother was born again, but of course, my father controlled what happened, what happened in the house. So my father wanted us to, the, the engagement list, the bride's family will have to submit uh, an engagement list of items to the groom's family. So my father wanted to put all manners of things on the list. Well, this one, that one, different things, alcoholic drink. And I told them, I am a Christian. This is, what, um, this is what the Bible says, I must honor God. I am a Christian and all of that. And God must be honored at my ceremony. I told according to God's leading, I have been obeying God. And I'm not going to allow this ceremony to make me disobey God. I must honor God. It's going to be a Christian ceremony. But I did not fight them. I explained to them, no daddy. And then I told them all those alcoholic things, all those items that are not right. I told them, no, we are not, we are not bringing all those things. We are not going to use them. God must be honored at my ceremony. I belong to him, spirit, soul, and body. He has branded me. I have the Holy Spirit. He has given me the seal of the Holy Spirit. He am branded for God. So it has to be God's way. So I told them all those unnecessary things, all those uh, um, alcoholic drinks and all of that. No, you have to remove them. He knew that, um, he, had, he knew he had been seeing that this girl has changed. So when I told him, no, I don't want these things, he did not argue with me. He said, okay. I know, I know she's, she's a Christian. So they just removed all those things. What, what do you want? Is this one? And then they asked me, what about this one? 
Is this one okay? Okay, yes, I, this one is okay. Is that one okay? So they asked for my opinion, and I told them, okay, the ones that were okay, the ones that were not okay, they removed them. So what I'm saying is, you will not disrespect your parents, but explain things to them, and let them know that you must, as a child, you are a Christian, you, are, you belong to the Lord, and you must do the will of God, you must glorify God. Also, it's important to pray. Don't just uh, go to them and you are just talking. Pray before you do anything. That's what I do. Before I take a step, I pray. Even if I have to talk to my children, I pray. Holy Spirit, I need to say this. Take control. So when you have to talk to your parents, pray as well, and then go to them. So pray. Get ready to obey God. When you pray, prayer will strengthen you. Also, involve your godly spiritual parents. What is your godly spiritual parents' opinion about your choice? Um, um, and then, if you're, where your parents don't want you to marry a Christian, they want you to marry someone who is not a Christian, someone who is like them. You, if, you, if there's someone in the family who is a Christian? Who understands? Who knows the mind of God? You can also involve that person. Maybe someone in the family or a friend of the family. You can also involve that person so that the person can talk to your parents. This is what my parents are saying. And the person will be able to, okay, I can let me go and see them. And you can also allow your pastor to see them. And that's the person you want to involve, the family, friend, or whatever, you can also tell that person to see your parents so that they can all get involved. Um, it is possible that your parents insist and they say no. No, you must not marry that person. You have to marry someone of our choice. You have to marry someone from our, our faith, our religion. And then because you are saying no, it is possible that they expect to disown you. It's also possible that they actually disown you or they want to cost you, place a cost on you. Don't allow yourself to be intimidated or be afraid. And don't allow anything, don't allow Satan to make you take a wrong step out of fear. You don't, whether you are a man or a woman, don't allow fear to push you to take a wrong step. Even if they want to disown you or they place a curse on you, God will take care of you. If you are obeying God, if you are standing on the word of God, God will take care of you. And the Bible says in um, Lamentations chapter 3, 37, who says, and it comes to pass when God has not said it? Who says, and it comes to pass when God has not said it? Some, most of the time, people allow fear to push them, to make them do things. Never allow fear. Sometimes people hear a doctor's report, something, something, something. They discover something. The first thing is not to start treatment immediately. That's not the first thing. Let, let that not be the first thing. The first thing should be go to God in prayer. Begin to seek the face of God. Seek the face of God first. Someone uh, talked about, um, shared his uh, experience, his testimony some time ago. He went to the hospital and the doctor said they found cancer. And they said he the man must start chemotherapy right away. They wanted to arrange for the man to start maybe the following day or two days after. You must start immediately. But the man said he, he had learned some things over time that no, even if it's cancer, he, did not, he does not have to start tomorrow or two days after. Let me go and pray first. The cancer that did not kill him till now will not kill him between today and tomorrow. But the doctor said, right away, right away. The man said, no, give me time. I'll come back. If I'm alive till now, the, the, to, to be, uh, the next 24 hours, I'm not going to die. The next, uh, even one week, I'm not going to die. Give me time to pray, to be sure of what I'm doing, what I'm going to do. So the man left, and uh, he went to see the face of God. 
And God told him what to do with prayer. Pray and change your diet and do this and do this and do this. And then you can also see the doctors. Work with the doctors. But this is what, the route you should take. And he went back to the doctor, told them, and, and they were, they, he, he, I think he, he went to a doctor who, another hospital, to see another doctor, and the doctor was able to work with him. And they were able to manage the situation. And the man recovered. Well, that was the man's um, um, testimony. So I said that to say that never take um, a step without seeking God's face. And don't allow fear to dictate what to do. Don't allow fear to dictate, to let, to tell you what to do. Don't make a decision out of fear. All right. Um, it's also possible that they are not Christians. But they can sense, they sense that something is not right with this relationship. It's possible. There was a case of um, a, a man some years back. The man wanted to marry a lady. The parents were not Christians. But I think the parents, maybe they went to consult with some people in some places. And they told the parents that, hey, that girl, don't, your, don't let your son marry that girl. Hey, that will be trouble. The girl is so, so person, the, the kind of person, blah, blah, blah. Don't let your son marry her. And so they told their son. And uh, the son did not marry the girl. And it turned out that um, the girl was actually possessed. The girl was actually possessed. So the parents were not Christians. They did not take the right step. They did not do the right thing. But they sensed that um, something was not right and all of that. By the girl's behavior and all of that, they sensed that something was not right. However, the important thing is that, what are, the point I'm making is that it's possible that they are not Christians, but they see the, some behaviors. They see some things. They expect some things and they are looking at the way things are and something is not right. Something is lacking. And they tell you, hey, we are, we are not comfortable with this. It is possible. That might be an indication that you should pray more about your relationship. What if your parents are Christians and they disapprove? I will talk about that next Sunday. What if they are Christians and they disapprove? What should you do? What should you do? I'll talk about that next Sunday. Next Sunday, by God's grace. All right, so I pray for you. Every man, every woman, Every single under the sound of my voice, I pray that you will get the issue of marriage right in Jesus' name. Satan will not set you up for failure and your destiny will not be truncated in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you will get things right. And whatever trap the enemy has set for you, oh, you will not fall into that trap in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will be glorified in your life. The Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will make the right decision. And your home will be an example of a Christian home in Jesus' name. And for those who are already married, if there are challenges, I pray that the Lord will lead you, he will guide you. He will give you victory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's keep it in mind. This program holds every Sunday. If, uh, if you have questions, feel free to contact me on WhatsApp, and I'll be glad to uh, help you. Don't forget to... Um, Observe your quiet time, read your Bible, talk to pray, talk to God and let God talk to you. And um, I mentioned last Sunday, one of the instructions that God has given us for this um, year 2024, well, for this first month at, at least, is to speak in tongues, pray in tongues for 30, for 30 minutes minimum every day. 30, uh, pray in tongues every day for 30 minutes at least every day. And uh, of course, I have um, Christian romance novels that will greatly help you.
and uh, story books for children and other books on relationship and marriage. Read them, read your Bible, be intimate with the Holy Spirit, continue to speak in tongues, and God will give you rest.